All right, new game, creepy world. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, I'm not gonna miss this one. Not gonna miss this one at all. Lost, abandoned, destitute, forsaken into a hellish H.R. Geiger-inspired hellscape labyrinth world, Scorn is an action-survival puzzle thriller game that will, if you give it the time, raise certain questions about morality, the cost of freedom, how far you're willing to go for the sheer sake of curiosity, but ultimately ends up as a pretty forgettable experience outside of its incredible world. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my review of Scorn. Let's start off with the story. I don't know. <laughs> there is one. There is a story here. But by the end of the game, I was honestly left scratching my head as to what the hell was going on. And while the ending of the game does put together some puzzle pieces to help you get your own interpretation of whatever Scorn is supposed to be, you're ultimately left with just about as many questions as you had when you began. Hey, friend. You want to go on a ride? Here we go. Whee! Now, there's certainly some moral questions that are raised and some interesting themes that are developed throughout the course of the game. Themes such as age, life, death, and rebirth, the burdens of family, the issues with individualism versus conformity, and the pros and cons of each of those, parenthood, and much more there is to explore here, and it does make for some interesting artistic expressionist interpretations that you, the player, can decide for yourself. And that's a big thing about Scorn Ended Story, is it's mostly left up for the player to interpret, much like many things within Scorn, including the gameplay. In Scorn, you play as an unnamed, maybe it's human, maybe it's something so far detached it's not recognizable. You're basically either a husk from Mass Effect, a possessed from Doom 2016, or I guess even a feral ghoul from Fallout, although slightly more intelligent than each of their equivalent brethren. You play as an an unnamed hero, if you could even call it that, and they have no who, what, where's, when's, why's, or how's, much like everything else in Scorn, it's left up to you to determine. So the character merely serves as an unnamed vessel for which you can perceive the world of Scorn through. And again, the world is the most important aspect about this game. The world and the curiosities that it raises are really what's going to drive most people through the six and a half to seven hour experience that is Scorn. It's certainly what brought me through the game wondering what's behind that wall? What's beyond the gate? What's around the corner? What happens if I stick my fleshy morsels into these holes? Okay, very, very helpful. Thank you kindly. That was incredibly useful. What else can I touch? Let's just touch everything. Just stick your fingers in every single hole. That's how you solve problems. Oh, elevator. <laughs> There's a lot of more deeper, thought-provoking messages that you can derive during your playthrough of Scorn, and it's up to you if you even want to spend the time and brain energy figuring those things out. But in this way, Scorn is more like a art piece in motion sometimes than it is a game, which is going to be a turnoff for a lot of people. Metamorphosis. 
breaking out of my cocoon. I'm still attached to the umbilical cord. I love the purple though. You can have all of these great messages, but at the end of the day, you still do need good gameplay. Run, 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 run back and forth. This is not fun gameplay. It's not the worst, it's not the best, but it is kind of nice that it's all coming together. This gameplay of Scorn is broken up into three main categories. You have the thriller aspects of it, you have the puzzle aspects of it, and then of course you have the combat and the action side of Scorn. And unfortunately, Scorn doesn't really succeed in any one of these three areas that greatly. The thriller aspect? Yeah, there's some spooks here you were not talking and it was never really meant to be something where you're getting scared out of your mind and you're on your wit's end and you're sitting at the edge of your seat, but it does keep tension enough, especially the way that the music and the sound design is done. You'll be creeped out for most of it, but it eventually, by the end, maybe because the environments don't really change that much and you're seeing a lot of the same things, by the end of the game you just sort of get used to it. Which again, you could argue raises some of the moral questions that Scorn presents. That doesn't make it for interesting gameplay and interesting thriller aspects when it starts to wear off halfway through the experience. The combat, well, <laughs> the combat, it's not there, Chief. This is not the way to do it. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh, he, he's stuck. He's, uh, all right. Okay. Oh, oh there's three more of them. I will do it again. You would just get into these awkward instances of hoping that an enemy would get trapped somewhere where with your I don't know if my channel is big enough to push what I can and can't say for the algorithm, but you know the weapon, the punching weapon, yeah. You just try to get them trapped in a position where you could wail on them a couple times and eventually they're dead. It really wasn't fun. This is a perfect explanation of the combat in Scorn. I can't have gotten a better moment. So here we are. We just kind of go in circles, cheesing out the AI a bit until we find our window to do the thing that we need to do. And then we make our move. And I've seen a lot of people be very criti critical about the gameplay in Scorn and whether or not it should have been there at all. I think, yes, absolutely. If you would have taken away all of the enemies in the game, then you would have lost something. It would have just been way too samey without an extra element added to Scorn. So to do away with them, I think would have been a big mistake. The downfall of Scorn, I believe personally, is the lack of ability to maneuver around these encounters in creative ways. Your only options are to either fight them or run past them. There's really no in-betweens. There's no option to hide. There's no option for cover. And even trying to run away is a bit of a pain in the butt when you don't really move that fast. You kind of just go around at a brisk jog, hoping that eventually you might leave their area of aggravation and they'll slither on back disgustingly to whatever gross hole they came out of. If you want to drift to a more action-y experience by the end of the game, that's fine. But the complete lack of any option to stealth around really, A, takes away from an area I think could have been improved by this, which is the thriller aspect and some of the horror aspects of the game. You don't get that because you're not scared by the enemies because you just spend your time running as fast as you can past them.
But what about the puzzles? It's it's a puzzle game, right? The puzzles will save Scorn and make it great, but no. They, they weren't that challenging, and some players might really appreciate that. You don't get stumped, you don't feel like an idiot, you don't have to look them up online. But realistically, every single one that I came across was pretty straightforward and linear. The only one that I genuinely got stumped on for a little bit was after I had been streaming my first impressions for three hours. Low, up, middle, low, up, middle, low, middle, up. Oh, yeah, no, I get- I understand- again, I understand the order. Literally, my brain is just, like, fried. Um, I- I totally get the order. Like, I understand that you need to go that way. Um. I'm just pooped. <laughs> But then, most of my time spent in Scorn was realistically just running around from point A to point B trying to find what I was supposed to be interacting with, not actually solving anything. And this is why... I think this is where my biggest criticism from- with the- OH! I will say in some regards the lack of handholding was actually a pretty nice change of pace from a lot of modern AAA games. The fact that I did have to spend the time trying to figure it out for myself as opposed to many modern titles that as soon as you seemingly are stumped the protagonist will call out in a voice line that hints in the direction you go in that you need to do. I need to move that barrel. I need to get to this point. There was none of that in Scorn, and for a lot of ways, it was pretty refreshing. There were some things that I really came to appreciate by the end of the experience. You do a lot of morally questionable things in order to progress, again, for the sake of progression, and by the end of it, I was fine with whatever I had to do to just unravel this mystery. Maybe that says something about me. As you navigate through these tunnels and labyrinths of death and life feeding off of decay and just decrepit horror of organic matter, you come to realize that maybe there's nothing here that's worth continuing on for, but you do it anyway. And that was a part of the gameplay that I came to appreciate. The general gameplay loop of Scorn is pretty easy to lay out. You start off in a chamber that has a labyrinth that you navigate around and you run from place to place trying to solve out the order to do things. You complete those things that then opens a gate and you run through to the next chamber that has a labyrinth where you run from point A to point B trying to solve puzzles. That's basically most of the game and occasionally there will be some enemies there that slow you down. And admittedly there was a pretty great sense of satisfaction when you completed the overall chamber that allowed you to move forward to the next step. Hey! That was an embarrassing display of what the rest of this night is gonna be like, wasn't it? Alright, who cares? We made progress. And that is how DeMarco does it. Unfortunately, in most cases, the payoff simply wasn't there as you'd wander into just yet another chamber that looks pretty similar. Overall, I think it does come back to having some pretty lackluster, uninteresting gameplay elements that don't help to reinforce this incredible world that everything was set up in. It's gorgeous in a really disgusting and grotesque way. But honestly, outside of the world, the more time that I spend away from the score and the more I forget about its gameplay. So what about the rest of the game? Well, the music and audio in particular, the music, it's nothing, <laughs> it's not even close to something that I'd ever spend time listening to in my car rides to and from work, but I will say that the music did a phenomenal job in the way that it was integrated into the game where you heard these chords progressing and getting louder as you went to certain segments. But do, oh my god, the music, the sound design is inc- I cannot compliment, like, it's something so simple, but you can hear the shepherd's tone. I think it's a shepherd's tone. Yeah, they're kind of the puzzle going on. 
Imagine these developers spent the time to make a game like Alien where it was actual proper survival horror. The music, the timing, the implementation of it was absolutely superb. And I cannot give that enough praise. Same with the audio, the just disgusting, visceral sounds that were present in the game just made you get the heebie-jeebies and the wiggles every single time that they would play. It was amazing, and I absolutely cannot commend the audio and the music teams enough. The last thing to discuss is issues and bugs that I experienced during the game. Thankfully, I played the day one patch version, or what I suspect had a day one patch, so I didn't run into a lot of problems that people who had review copies might have experienced, but I still did have issues. One in particular was with the autosave system. I know a lot of people commented on there's no reason for a game like this not to have a more frequent or at least more consistent autosave system. It doesn't make any sense, and in fact, I played when I was streaming my first impressions, I had to go on much longer than I wanted to because I wasn't sure if the game had saved. I didn't realize at the time I could have checked the load screen, so that's on me, I guess, but it should have been an option just from the beginning. Maybe exit saves? But because of this inconsistent save system, I actually ran into one of the most irritating bugs I possibly could have, which blocked me from progressing because the game, it didn't quite freeze, but it just got stuck. Okay, so... My last save was, you can see the the playtime 448, I am at playtime 557, so it's almost an hour ago. And I have a bug where I can't do anything. It's just no option to use, it's, it's, it's gross. And my only solution is to go back an hour of playtime to fix it. So, you know, I also had just one other notable bug, which was an audio bug where I kept hearing the sound of an enemy. It didn't ever really go away. It just, it wasn't an issue. It was just annoying. And when I had died and had to reload the game, it eventually went away. But I did experience it. So what else is there to say about score? Well, it's what happens when you take a really interesting and inspired world concept and you don't support ported and lifted up by other mechanics within the game. Bethesda games, for example, they have and are praised for their incredible worlds, but they also have NPCs, the questing, they have different biomes and the dungeons and the sense of progression and so much more that helps to supplement the world to make it a cohesive, interesting experience. What you have in Scorn is just a fraction segment, you gotta push all that other stuff to the side, and you're just left with a bit of a husk like the protagonist that you play as. Now, for Ebb Software's first game, I have to say, my heart goes out to all those developers. You could see the passion and the love that was put here. And genuinely, I did not regret a single minute of the time that I spent within the world of Scorn. But at the end of the day, it just led to an experience while its world was potent, the rest of it, pretty forgettable. The final score for Scorn is going to be a 6 out of 10, slightly above average. That's about a 7.5 if we were to put it on the IGN conversion scale. There's a lot to love about Scorn, especially the passion and the detail that went into creating this world, and there's still more here to explore, and I really hope that we get it. But right now, with this game as it stands, it's just not quite there. And maybe a sequel will bring out all of the best aspects that this original Scorn could have offered. But until then, we'll just have to wait and see. Should just do like a little sock puppet monster that chases me across. Just put a googly eye right here. And... <laughs> 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 <laughs>